Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Got me out on today, a little bit cold. So just gonna run you through what we've got going on today. We've got a Volkswagen Transporter engine. This is a two litre 16 valve uh, twin turbo TDI. It's done, this engine has only done 60,000 miles and it's on a 62 plate. And the engine wear, if you like, like the bores and the bearings and that look a little bit odd. Um, so I think it's just started, I think it started using oil um, and, it's, and it's sort of giving head gasket symptoms. So at the garage has pulled this to bits and um, bought the engine bits into us. So what I've found is at the moment, I've just refaced the, the block face, took a three thou cut as normal and it has cleaned. Um, but the bores, if you can see in there, they don't look too good. There's a big old lip on three of them. This one's not too bad, but I've measured them and you've got about two to three thou wear in these two bores. You've got a couple of thou all the way up until under this little lip. And then you've got about five or six thou there. And this one's probably a thou or two. So, but... <laughs> He did want us to build the short motor once we'd done the machining, but to be honest, we don't like re-ringing anyway. We, we normally don't do it unless the bores are absolutely perfect. And then it's, it's still a, you know, if it starts using oil on your head be it, we recommend you, you bore it. So I'm gonna get back to the customer and recommends he re-bores this. Um, the only trouble is at the moment, and we're finding this from, from our gasket suppliers and parts suppliers is what would normally, you know, a year or so back be an on the shelf gasket set or, you know, various engine parts would just be on the shelf, not a problem. They're tending to be either on back order or just non-existent at the minute. So the headset for this, I've managed to get everything else. The pistons I can get in 0.5 oversized, but I won't be able to get until the beginning of February. But the headset, is a no-go um, at the moment. So he's probably gonna have to go genuine individual gaskets on that. Um, got a Victor Rhines head gasket coming, which we won't use anything else, either Victor Rhines or genuine, or whether Victor Rhines is genuine, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get back to him. Recommend, if we if he just wants to go a set of rings on this and we, we deglaze the bores, then on his, his head be it and let, I'll let him build it. But um, I'll just show you the crankshaft. Although the crankshaft has measured fine, it's, it did have some very sort of, if you can see here, it had some very odd sort of wear marks on it. Um, although, as I say, we measured it and it's, it's not really worn, but it just, the marks on it are a bit odd. Um, so I'll just show you the, we've got the main bearings here, which, don't look too bad but you know bear in mind this is see there look that's a bit there's a very unusual sort of wear mark in there so um we're gonna as i say we've measured that and it's perfect so we're gonna po polish that and obviously a set of crank bearings but the rod bearings i shall just show you those they're outside this is the con rod um you can see by the, the crowns it doesn't look to be running too bad Although there's some blow by off that top ring. Um, but you've got these got these are called a sputter bearing. So you've got a different material top to bottom half. But the unusual thing is, is the bottom shell is absolutely perfect by the looks of it. But the top shell there, if you if you can see that, it's worn through to the copper back in. So this engine weren't going to be long really until it started to either do an end or, or mark considerably the, the big end journals on the crank. So that's very unusual for 60,000 miles and it's apparently got full service history. So yeah, I don't understand that really. So here we got the cylinder head off the transporter. So we're going to remove the valves here. I'm going to soda blast in all the ports 
um, and the outside of the head itself. We're going to go through the valves and seats, make sure the guides are okay. Obviously put new stem seals on it, reface the head, cut the seats, and then that's good to go. So there we have got the Golf VR6 block. As you can see, it's all been bored and faced, so that's complete. We've got the crank down here, which John has measured, and he thinks that that's going to clean at, um, at 0.25 on, on all the journals. So yeah, by the looks of it, he's going to have to set the narrow stone up. And at the moment, I know you guys would like to, um, some of you guys would like to see this crank grinder in action at the moment he's got this crank in there which has obviously got the wide stone so he's just got to finish that and he's going to take that down and grind the the golf crank and i'll show you i'll do a video once he's grinding that crank and um and show you this thing in action but um yeah as i say at the moment with the as far as the golf goes we've refaced the head i'm just cutting the seats here you see most of the seats are nearly cut and, and that'll be done then. We should get that on the pallet and uh, send it back to the customer. So we've got the go ahead on the rebore of the Volkswagen engine. As you can see, the block is up being bored now. Pistons are on order, but they're slightly back order. So they're gonna be probably beginning of February now, but we've, we'll bore it now and then we'll wait for the pistons to finish hone it. And then over here we have the the R32 cylinder head of the Golf, and this is just having a little. Um, <laughs> we've refaced it before. Luckily, we only took three thou off it, but there was a little mark or a little ding still on the, one of the gasket lines. So I'm just giving it another lick over now, and um, I've done a bit more soda blasting down the exhaust ports, and then that is all done. So. As most of you guys might know, um, that January for all YouTubers is a little bit slow after the peak of December. And I think a lot of YouTubers sort of take a break in January because obviously everything's a bit slow and has been a business channel really. Obviously, yeah, it does through December, it goes a little bit quiet, um, which gives us time to catch up with what we've got, but we've got a lot of stuff coming in at the end of January. So really trying to do sort of videos in January is a bit scratching around really. Um, but as I say, I've noticed there has been one or two comments from, from people there that have either unsubscribed or put a comment saying how boring the videos are. <laughs> but to be honest guys, I mean, if you watch all of our videos, the idea of the channel is to give you a good insight as to what goes on in the entire business. It's not just showing you the work we're doing and the processes all the time. We want to give you, it, it's just a general running of the business really. So yes, there's going to be videos of us doing machining and building and what have you. And then there's going to be some going on about the, the warranty side of it and the things that go wrong and what have you in, in everyday business. So if it's not for you guys, don't worry about leaving a comment, just leave the channel, go and go and watch something. There's a lot of stuff to watch on YouTube. So, you know, there's a lot of subscribers on, on air and viewers that really do enjoy watching everything that we produce. So um, you don't have to comment. Right guys, so talking of things that do go wrong and can go wrong. This is uh, a mini head that recently we did an unleaded conversion. So an unleaded is put hardened seats in the exhausts, uh, decoke, and skim the head and obviously cut the inlet seats now the customer's had it back fortunately he's a local customer and he's good as gold uh, but he's noticed that on this inlet seat if you see there's a very slight crack now we probably well we didn't spot it but the reason we probably didn't spot it is because it was hardly visible until obviously it sat about and there's been obviously a little bit of moisture in here and it's we've gone very slightly rusty and then it just makes the, the crack more apparent. So he's not worried what we're gonna do and we do this lots. Um, it's the same as if we were putting inserts in, in all of them. We're just gonna put an insert in here, which is gonna butt up right to the exhaust seat. And obviously because they've both got the sixth hour interference, that's gonna hold their, that in there nicely. We do this 
quite a lot and um, we hardly ever see them back if, if at all after that so that should solve that little problem so I'm going to get a seat on order and then hopefully that will turn up tomorrow and I can get this one complete right so this job here is probably going to take me up to the end of today and this is the Cosworth that's been sitting on our shelf over there alongside the S2000 Honda block and this one is the one that we put in the ductile iron top hat liners in and now we've got the press all complete over there so that's ready to use so I've just prepped this block and when I say prepped I've made sure that the internal because obviously it's been sitting a while I can't remember now what um, how I left it but as you can see we've got around sort of two thou interference there as the that is set on zero for the liner diameter so we've got about two thou interference on these which is more than adequate but what i normally do is put a loctite down the bottom or the bottom half and um also what i mean by prepped is i take this sharp edge from inside here so basically the reason i do that is to make sure that we don't get this edge touching the inside of the top hat liner um because if it does you press these down and it can give you a false impression of me pressing down so i just remove that and then there's no worry then that that's going to sit in any sort of radius so we've got the block clean what i'm going to do is i'm going to warm this block up slightly so it just opens them up and lets the um, liners go in a little bit freer these have actually been in the fridge so they're nice and cold and this is the loctite i use it's a 620 and um, it's not as hard as the 648 but it's more of a uh, sort of a locking compound i stick that down the bottom half and um yeah we'll get them pressed in keep going partially down and then up is just to make sure that the liner has centralized itself and we're not trying to push it in on the piss as they say in engineering terms so that sounds to me like it's going in perfect you can just start to hear it having a little bit of resistance because of the interference So there we go, those liners are well and truly in, seated perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and bore it to the finished bore size, which would be the standard bore size on this. Hone it, face the block, and jobs are good. Well thanks ever so much for watching guys. Sorry about the silly hat, but needs must. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until another one, we'll see you again. Take care.